Hey everybody, John Skiba here from the Consumer Warrior YouTube channel. And in this video, we're going to talk about debt collection lawsuits and specifically a question I get on the channel pretty frequently. And that is what is the difference between mediation and arbitration and how you can use both of those approaches to resolving your lawsuit. But if this is your first time here to my YouTube channel, please go ahead, click subscribe, check on that little bell that way you'll be notified each and every day when we put out new videos that'll help you deal with your serious debt issue. All right, let's talk about debt collection lawsuits. If you're finding yourself being sued by a debt collector, particularly if you've watched a lot of videos here on my YouTube channel, you probably heard me talk about arbitration, maybe even mediation, I know we've talked about several times. And in the comments to the channel, I often get the question of what's really the difference between arbitration and mediation. So I wanna talk about what both of these processes are and how you can use them to resolve the debt collection lawsuit and avoid all those things like wage garnishment, bank levy, and all the other types of things that come along with it and avoid even bank bankruptcy altogether and just be able to deal with the lawsuit. So let's talk about mediation first. Mediation is the process where the parties engage, whether formally or informally, in some type of settlement negotiations. In this formal process, some courts will actually offer mediation. You'll see this here in Arizona where I practice law in our justice court system. They have volunteers who will help mediate cases where they'll actually bring the parties in. They separate you into two separate rooms. A professional mediator goes back and forth between the parties to see if there's some type of terms or resolution that can be reached. Often in that process, if the you know the defendant will propose some type of settlement, usually a dollar amount or a payment plan or something like that, and then they'll go back and forth to where they come up with numbers and terms that both sides will agree to. Now, one thing with mediation in a formal setting like that, it's not something, you know, usually what's talked about in there is confidential. It's not something that the creditor can use against you at trial. The mediator can't be used as a witness against you. And they have these rules in place so that the parties can talk talk freely and just try to get some resolution to it without going to trial. The benefits to mediation are that you have some control in the process as far as what the end result is. You know, when you go to trial, uh, trials, it's kind of a gamble. It's rather, you know, it's all or nothing when it comes to trying to resolve the lawsuit. You're either going to win completely and owe nothing, or you're going to lose completely. You're going to owe the full thing plus attorney's fees and court costs. Well, in a mediation, you're going to retain some of the control of it as far as being able to craft an outcome that may not be perfect. You may end up paying something to the creditor, but it's a usually a lesser amount and you can negotiate things like, you know, no interest or a payment plan. They can't do collections against you while you're making the payments, you know, that type of thing. You can get creative in including terms in there that give you a lot more control. Now, the mediation process can be done without a mediator and without the court's intervention. There are private mediation companies out there that could help you with this. JAMS is one. They also do a private arbitration, which we're going to talk about. JAMS, I always forget what it stands for. It's the Judicial Arbitration and Mediation Services. You can just Google them and they do offer mediation services where they can help that. Or there are private mediators or attorneys in every city that for a fee, they will come in and try to negotiate a settlement between the parties. So that can be a benefit or you can do it between parties themselves, just sending offers back and forth. It's not formal mediation, but it's really just settlement negotiations. So that's mediation, some of the pros and cons and how you can use it to resolve your lawsuit without actually having to go to trial. Now let's talk about arbitration. I'm gonna talk about two different types of arbitration, specifically because I'm an attorney in Arizona, this is where I practice, and we have something called compulsory arbitration, which is dealt with through the court system itself. So in Arizona, in lawsuits, civil lawsuits, where the amount in dispute is under $50,000, so the amount that they're suing you for is less than $50,000, the parties are required to participate in what's called compulsory arbitration. A good way to think about arbitration, it's kind of like an informal trial. I always say it's kind of like a trial around a conference room table instead of in a courtroom. Mediation, so it's different than mediation. Mediation. mediation is where the parties are working together with a mediator to try to come to some middle ground. Arbitration is different. Arbitration is like trial. It's all or nothing. So the compulsory arbitration process in Arizona, the way that this works is in cases, again, where the amount in dispute is under $50,000, the court will assign an arbitrator. The arbitrator is an attorney in the state of Arizona who's been practicing for at least five years, and they didn't volunteer to do it. I always say this is kind of like jury duty for attorneys. The attorneys are just randomly selected. They're assigned the case instead said, go to it. You have an arbitration hearing uh, with the parties. And this is literally at the arbitration hearing. It's usually held in a conference room. Plaintiff goes first, the creditor, they have to put on their case. There's going to be witnesses. There's going to be exhibits. You'll have the chance to cross-examine their witnesses and present your own case. And then the arbitrator will issue a ruling that states which party wins. So it's not something like mediation where there's a middle ground reached. It's an all or nothing thing. In Arizona, the compulsory arbitration process, it's mandatory, pulsory, <laughs> that you participate. However, if either side does 
doesn't like the end result, then the parties can ask the judge just to go ahead and set a regular trial. It does resolve a lot of cases. It'll give you a window into what court may do. The downside to it is because like I said, they just assign the arbitrator to it and it's just an attorney. A lot of times you'll get attorneys who don't practice in that area, who are not trial attorneys, may get a, an arbitrator assigned who has never been in a courtroom ever in their entire career because they do transactional type law, or maybe they're a you know criminal prosecutor or something like that. Sometimes you're just getting someone who doesn't have a lot of background in it. So, but it, it often does, it can help resolve it. Now, another one that we talk about on the channel quite a bit here is different than that. And this is private arbitration. In Arizona, compulsory arbitration is actually dealt with by the courts, court systems. You don't have to pay any extra that it's all dealt with through the system. However, private arbitration, in most credit card agreements, you have the option to go to a private arbitrator. And just like the name sounds, it's a private company that offers arbitration services. So instead of an attorney being assigned by the court to hear the arbitration, you're actually going to pay somebody to help you through the arbitration process. The two main companies in the US, the first one I mentioned is JAMS, J-A-M-S, Judicial Arbitration and Mediation Services. They offer this as well as AAA, the American Arbitration Association. I can remember that one a lot easier. Those two companies offer private arbitration services for a fee. Essentially, you're hiring a judge, you're hiring an arbitrator to hear the case. A couple of benefits to it, and I'll put a link down below. I have a whole tutorial and templates on why you should ask the court for private arbitration as a way to resolve your lawsuit. And while it's it's probably one of the more powerful tools out there to actually just get the whole thing to go away. But some of the benefits are, is that you're taking it out of the court system, you're having an arbitrator look at it, and it's something where it's really usually out of the wheelhouse of the debt collection attorneys. It's not something they do a whole lot of. And so often they may be willing to settle the case for much less rather than go through that process. Also a big problem for the debt collector and the firms that represent them is the filing fees for the creditor are huge. They're anywhere from $2,500 to $3,500, whereas the filing fees for the consumers are about $200. So there's a dramatic difference in the amount of fees and stuff that it takes to litigate there. It's much more expensive for the creditor. They don't want to be there. And so if you ask for arbitration, they may just approach you with a settlement proposal, or you could approach them and get rid of the lawsuit altogether. So that's the difference really between mediation, arbitration. We also have compulsory arbitration, private arbitration. I'll put some links down in the notes below so you can kind of visit those sites and see. I also have, like I said, my tutorials. It'll help walk you through that process and help you to resolve this and deal with it once and for all. Thanks for watching today.